everyone and welcome back to my channel True Crime and Trials where I discuss true crime and trials. My name's Lindsay and I'm here today to bring you more Durst wit trial witnesses. So next up is Paul Coulter and he's retired homicide LAPD and we go through um, the investigation into Susan's death and they go through a timeline so on the 11th of January 2001, he took over the investigation into Susan Berman's murder. He got um, areas of Susan's home reprocessed for fingerprints and treated the walls with a chemical to check for fingerprints. No fingerprints belonging to Bob were found. Um, next was 13th of January 2001. And at this point, he was not focusing on Bob as a suspect. 17th of January 2001 and he got Susan's clothes collected from the coroner's office and sent for testing. Nothing was found that didn't belong to Susan and again the bullet casing was tested and no fingerprints were found which he does say that it's always very hard to get any sort of fingerprint or DNA off a bullet casing. 18th of January 2001 they served a search warrant for Susan's phone records which you can see here. Then the on the 22nd of January 2001, Sereb had sent Paul's, Paul Susan's bank statement. 24th of January, Paul sent the case in for testing to see if it matched anything in their system. Didn't match anything. 27th of March 2001, he, invent, he invented? <laughs> he interviewed Paul Kaufman. He wasn't very cooperative and didn't want to come in. But they persisted and managed to get him in for an interview. Paul wrote a report and a portion of this is being read and it reads, Paul Kaufman stated that at one point Berman had told him that Bob had killed his wife. Kaufman is unsure but he thinks Berman had told him that Bob had made this admission to her. Berman had related to him that Bob's wife was a beautiful woman that was attending medical school and she was going to leave Bob Berman stated that Bob flipped out and he didn't mean to do it. Paul didn't show any any hesitation when telling Paul this story. 11th, 11th of October 2001, Paul received information from Galveston PD that Bob had been arrested, some weapons had been recovered. That day, Bob became their focus. 24th of October 2001, Paul received more information from Galveston PD and was told that Bob had flown from San Francisco to New York on the 23rd of December 2000. This was the first time they found out that Bob had been in California at the time of Susan's murder. 14th of November 2001, he served a search warrant for Bob's wireless phone. This phone had no longer been used after this date from the 1st of November. 30th of November, 30th of November 2001, he received information that Bob had been arrested for shoplifting in Pennsylvania. 30th of April 2002, he met with Bob in Galveston. Previously, Paul had obtained a court order ordering Bob to provide handwriting samples. Paul took a handwriting specialist with him to Galveston. Mr Lewin also went with them. Bob provided samples and Paul took them back to LA. Paul explains more about when he watched Bob writing and he noticed when he wrote in cursive he was fine but when he was printing it sound, seemed like he was slow and deliberate and would almost write the letters in reverse like counterclockwise sh um, shown in this picture. It looked like Bob was making a conscious effort to alter the way he wrote certain letters. Classic Bob again I mean 11th of July 2002, Paul received statements from Bob's visa card. They wanted to see what charges Bob had on his card at that time. There were charges for the use of an aeroplane phone. So on the 22nd of July 2002, he requested the airplane phone records um, from the 19th of December when Bob flew to San Francisco. And another piece of evidence is shown, which is a copy of a check that Bob had cashed in California on the 20th of December in 2000. On the 29th of June 2005, Paul met with Sergeant Jones from Galveston PD. This was after Bob's trial. 
Sergeant Jones had brought some evidence for him and he gave Paul a, um, a 22 caliber Luger gun, a Browning semi-automatic, and there were also two revolvers recovered in Pennsylvania. Along with the guns, there was also a five-star notebook, a Fairfield Connecticut Atlas was also given to Paul. Paul has met with Jarecki and Smerling and in 2010 he was contacted by Smerling and was told they were working on a documentary about Susan and he did meet with Smerling. Smerling offered to show him taped interviews of Bob and Paul watched them. Paul gave Smerling a copy of the cadaver note and photos of Susan's home. Paul was hoping to get new information and keep the case alive. So, cross-examination. Paul didn't take any envelopes or pencils on, on his initial walkthrough on the 11th of January 2001. Should he have? Probably. When they chemically treated the wall in Susan's house for fingerprints, there were fingerprints that... There were fingerprints part found that weren't Susan or Bob's. It was a friend's son who was interviewed at the time. We don't get a name or anything. Um, Paul Kaufman never told Paul that he and Susan were discussing plots for stories when Susan told him what she did. There is no evidence that Bob Durst's gun killed Susan. So the defence showed a picture that was with the notebook that the state showed Paul and with it was a picture of what they say is Bob and Cathy. Now, please take a close look at this picture and please tell me if this actually looks like Cathy. I'll put another picture up of the original photo that they've been using of Bob and Cathy. It looks nothing like her. I was sat there baffled and I was like, that looks nothing like Cathy. I was stuck on it for at least five minutes. I was like, no way, that looks nothing like her. Let me know what you think because... No, sorry, it looks nothing like her. Right, that's the end of that testimony. So I have one more video after this and then I need to finish Stuart Altman's testimony. So until then, bye for now. Mm -hmm.